Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with another word from the nerd. Um, today I want to talk about uh, electrical and water surge protectors. Um, a lot of people are familiar with these things, little water pressure regulator. I guess it's not technically a surge protector, but it kind of fits into that same category. It prevents too much of something from coming into the other thing. Um, a lot of people are familiar with these because they're simple, they're inexpensive, so dealerships don't tend to to get too upset if they have to toss one of these into a deal every now and then. You know, these are anywhere from nine to 12 bucks, depending on where you find them. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, you, they're, they're, they're great. Uh, basically, RV water systems are only made to handle about 40 to 45 PSI. And some RV uh, parks, to accommodate a high water demand, um, they will have extremely high water pressure built into their systems. They may have uh, up to 75, 80 PSI on the lines. That's because they expect to have 200 some people there all running a shower, turning a tap all at the same time. Um, in spring, in fall, in off season camping, that's not always the case. So if you go to a place that's built for heavy summer volume, um, you may actually have too much pressure coming in on those lines. That's what these things are good for. Basically, it's just a limiter. All it does is take a pipe this big and cut it down to that big so that literally only so much water can get through there. It's simple, it's effective, works great. You can really just screw this right onto the end of the uh, water hose that you use for fresh water uh, service on your RV and forget it ever exists. You just don't have to get more complicated than that. Works great. Um, the thing I want to spend more time talking about though are electrical surge protectors. Uh, seems like a lot of people still aren't aware of these. And um, I think it's because that for years, you didn't have to. You didn't need these things. Uh, like, why do we make such a big deal about it? To give you an idea, um, uh, we, we've started including these in our starter kits without fail since, I think, very early 2012 and onward. Um, it's one of the, the very last things, like, if, if it gets right down to the nitty-gritty and we're really arguing on dollars and cents or whatever the case is this uh, I, I will I will go down in flames before I give one of these up in a deal uh, and by that I mean I I include them you know if you're like no I don't want that thing I want the extra couple bucks off my deal I'm gonna say that's foolish and here's why um, it's it's really this simple guys if you had a three hundred dollar laptop whatever you plug that into a power strip at least you should how about your you know $13,000, $30,000, you know, $60,000 fifth wheel, something like that. Don't you think you ought to plug that into a power strip too? That's what this is. Um, why Why is this suddenly a thing? Why is this such a big deal? There's folks who like, man, I've been camping for decades. I never had something like this. Why, why do I care about this thing? I think this is just one of these dealers trying to make extra money. Um, the, uh, the, the thing is, times change. Equipment changes, RVs change. RV parks, slower to change. Um, it, and it makes sense because it's it's a massive process to update physical infrastructure. You know, when things went from 15 to 20 amp to 30 amp and now 50 amp? Well, I've got fifth wheels out here that can run three simultaneous air conditioners with a 42,000 BTU uh, combined central uh, AC system. That's just never happened before in history. Back in 97, we didn't have that. We also have giant uh, electric refrigerators in RVs nowadays. We have huge, ridiculous flat screens. We've got all this extra stuff. And it all needs juice. It all needs power. Well, RVs are using more power than they ever have before. It's hard for a campground to stay up to date. It's hard for them to be able to keep up to that standard. So what happens is sometimes in a campground, you have a rolling brownout. If you've been to a lot of parks, you know that you'll have rows of trailers parked back to back to back, and then you'll have a row over here back to back to back. Well, this bank of trailers may lose power briefly. All of the power soaked up by these trailers gets spiked through the rest of the park real quick. You get a surge. That can, and I have seen with frequency, fry all of your high voltage <laughs> It only seems to affect the really expensive stuff. Isn't that convenient? Uh, air conditioner, microwave, TV, converter, etc. All your big expensive things get cooked. Um, it's 
I mean, it's literally the exact same logic as a lightning strike. You're getting a surge of electricity that something is not made to handle. Electronics, like you can have this broad spectrum of electricity, but electronics are only designed to work within this little window right here. Um, you know, each electronic has its own little window, and that's, that's what the RV is designed to do, is supply the proper amount of electricity through the RV to each of its uh, components. But you can overflow that. Think of it kind of like, uh, oh, like a dam, you know, like a, like a hydroelectric dam. You, you take a river, you put a dam in there, and a certain amount of water still flows through that to keep it running. But if you get a huge flood or rain or something, it can overflow and it can cause problems. Exact same thing. Water and electricity actually work in very similar ways. Things, when you say have a flow, one thing with a flow works about the same as another thing with the flow. Um, so long story short, get one of these. You get what you pay for with one of these, just like you get what you pay for with anything else in life. We pretty much all know that's true. Um, like this is a $160 uh, component right here, but it, all, it includes indicators to tell you if you have good power, clean power, if there's an open ground, a ground fault, something like that. This is a diagnostic tool as much as it is a preventative maintenance tool at the same time. Well, all that extra stuff means a little extra money. You can get these down below 100 bucks pretty easily. Um, but it'll, it'll just be a plug into one side, a plug into the other. If you still have electrical problems with your camper, then you're going to need to get a circuit analyzer that would have put you back at the cost of one of these anyway. So it, it all depends. You know, in our starter kits, we have a more basic version, but our starter kits do include electric surge protectors. That's just, I, I actually hesitated to make this video because it has been such a tool for us. We have earned so many customers' business because of explaining that we include surge protectors when other guys don't. And once people understand what this is and what it does for you, they realize, oh yeah, 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 I, I need one of those. Although I did have someone leave a comment the other day, well now I'm feeling guilty for not plugging my uh, uh, camper or my laptop into a surge protector. <laughs> so to each their own. Um, like I said, there's there's good, better, best versions of these. These are pretty simple and cut and dry. There's just, I mean, all you do is choke water down on that. But I feel that they're both really important. You know, unless you're boondocking or dry camping or, or whatever you want to call it, if you're at a park and you're plugged into stuff, get these things. It's a one-time purchase. If you get it with your first RV, it can go if you get to the last one. You know, it's just like if you get a motorcycle, you don't just get a motorcycle, you got to get the helmet, the boots, the leathers, the, all that stuff. Your first time you get an RV, you have extra accessories that you should get with it. You don't have to, but it's a good idea. So uh, for more information, give us a call. Short of that, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.